Welcome to Developmental Psychology Unit 3. In this unit, we'll be discussing lots of things that happen to our postnatal physical development. And we're going to start off by talking about growth patterns. Now, for lots of reasons, this unit will overlap with the science of pediatrics. And that's because as developmental psychologists, we understand that growth indicates health. And that physical health can be a major marker of our mental and psychological health. So because of this, especially in infancy and young childhood, we are very interested in the physical growth patterns of an offspring. And so there's three main patterns we tend to pay attention to in developmental psychology. The first of which is cephalocaudal development. This is the idea that the development tends to start off in the head and move towards the feet. Cephalo is the head, caudal is the feet, if you will. And so we've seen this in unit two, prenatal development. We've seen how in the embryo, for instance, the head was much more developed than the little buds of the arms or the legs. And so things started to develop from the head down. A second growth pattern we pay attention to is proximal distal. And proximal means from the inside of the trunk outwards to the limbs and the extremities. And we also seen this in prenatal development. One of the very first things to develop would be things like the heart, the kidneys, the spinal column, things that are very inside our trunk would develop first. In comparison, our arms start off as little buds that would then develop outward. And we developed our arm before we developed our hand, before we developed our fingers. Now that could be an indicator of proximal distal, but the development of our limbs also follows our third pattern of differentiation. Differentiation is the idea that we start off really basic and then get more complex. This is the idea that in prenatal development, our eyes start off as just little light sensors before they develop into their much more complex newborn organs. And that our arms and our legs start off as really simple buds. And then the buds became elongated, but were still pretty simple, didn't have many diverse characteristics. And then eventually we developed a hand and then we developed our fingers. And postnatally in this unit, we're going to talk about how when we learn to use our limbs, we start off in a much more basic fashion before moving to a much more specific fashion. So the pattern of differentiation is the idea that we move from simple to complex. And so these three patterns, cephalocaudal, proximal distal, and differentiation are important because if an infant is not developing along these ways, let's say they are born with a relatively smaller head or larger limbs, then that may be a very precise indicator that they're going to follow an atypical developmental trajectory. There could be in a developmental or genetic atypicality there that we want to be aware of from the outset. And so majority of us will follow these three patterns, but we are looking for exceptions to the rule to help us understand if there's any delayed growth or any exceptional patterns. Now talking about exceptionalities, it's important to understand that developmental psychologists are very interested in measuring averages and what is typical and what often we called normal or in the normal range. So we need to talk about what we mean by averages in developmental psychology. It's important to understand that when we mean average, we actually just mean the mathematical average. If you add up everyone's height and divide by the number of people, what is the average height? You don't need to be average to be typical though. And so because of that, we also talk about typical or normal ranges. And so these are not the precise mathematical average, but more a range around the mathematical average where we understand most people to be. And so this is the idea that you could be plus or minus the average to a certain degree and still be considered typical or still be considered normal. If you're outside that normative range or that typical range, then we may identify that there is something atypical going on. Now for individuals who fall outside of that typical range, that lets us screen them for extra things that are going on, making sure that they're okay. For instance, we start off with these ranges right away in infancy. One of the very first average ranges we give is the average birth weight at Canadian hospitals. And we know that the average infant is born about 7.5 pounds. Now, that is the mathematical average, 7.5 pounds, but what's the normal range? Well, the normal range is give or take 1.25 pounds. That's actually one standard deviation if you know what standard deviations are. And so what's going on here is we know roughly 68% of newborn infants are going to be between 6.25 pounds and 8.75 pounds. Right away we know that if you are born within that range, you are considered to be in the typical range because that's where 70% of infants are. 
However, if you're a little bit under 6.25 or a little bit over 8.25, you could still be healthy. You could still be considered normal, but it just may be a little bit atypical to have a weight that high. So if you have an infant who's born under six pounds, we might want to screen them, make sure they were given enough nutrition, make sure there's nothing delaying their growth. And most infants that are born under six pounds are okay. Some people are just going to be smaller. And we also want to screen the infants that are born larger than nine pounds because there could be something going on there like diabetes. Now, some people are just larger and that's okay too, but we just want to screen them. And so these trends help us to mark where people are throughout their infancy and their childhood. And we use this as a good gauge for how things are going. We know that despite where you start off in your birth weight, we tend to grow at the same rate. So we follow the same trajectory. And so the trajectories you can see here, uh, you can take your time and zoom in on this if you want, but you can find these graphs readily available online. And so these are known as the growth charts and it's broken down by gender and also broken down into weight versus height. Now, for example, let's follow uh, girls weight gain over time. We can see this darker line in the middle. This is the average. This is the mathematical average for where girls will be. However, we have these other lines that show different levels of typicality of girls that are in the typical range. Now, regardless if they're born a little bit underweight for average or overweight for average, they all follow the same trajectory. The lines bend and grow in the same pattern. And so we would expect this. What we often look for as developmental psychologists is someone who doesn't follow these lines. Let's say there's a baby who's born above average for weight, but then they don't gain weight. So when they're about this age, they're, they're above the solid line, but then they don't gain and they stop developing. Well, that would be a very intense red flag that maybe that infant is not feeding okay. Maybe they're malnourished. Maybe there's something going on in their environment. Maybe they are experiencing an illness. And so we would want to make sure. Same as if you have an infant who is born a little bit under the curve, we might actually see them catch up a little bit. They might be in the 15th percentile and they gain, they go up to the 30th percentile. That'd be okay. But if they're following this line and all of a sudden they drop down or if all of a sudden they shoot up quite widely, we would want to see what made them jump off their trajectory. Maybe it's okay. Maybe there was something that we know and it's being monitored by a healthcare physician. But if it's not, we want to check into that. So same thing for the boys, regardless where they're born, if they're born above or below average, we expect them to follow the same trajectory, whether it's for height or for weight. Now beyond infancy, we continue to track this, but less intensely so. We have detected a few interesting patterns. So my favorite is the idea that at roughly age two, if you were to double the toddler's height at their second birthday, that gives you roughly an estimate of their adult height. Now, however, there's a couple caveats. When you double the height for boys, you usually have to take away a few centimeters because they tend to be a little bit higher, a little bit taller than what they'll be for their adult height. Versus when you double the height for girls, you have to add a couple centimeters because they tend to be a little bit lower than what they will be at their adult height. Boys seem to be growing a little bit faster in their toddler years than girls. And what's really cool is the average weight and the average height at age eight is both 56 inches tall and 56 pounds in weight. And so I like that it's just 56, 56. And it's an easy one to remember to see if you're under or over at age eight. Now, again, there's lots of room for what's considered normal and what's considered healthy outside of these mathematical averages.